Hi everyone, Trisha Oven here, and I'm back today with another video for you. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a snow globe using Art Impressions and Gina K Design stamps. We're going to be using this frame stamp from Gina K Designs called Holiday Frame. This is a stamp created by Melanie Minchinger, and I absolutely love it because it's just so versatile. I've used it on a lot of projects, and I plan on using it a lot more in the future. So I'm using my Mini Misty for the first part of this project. Our first step is going to be to ink the circle part of the stamp with a Marvy marker in African Violet. Now I'm, I'm inking up the entire circle, but if when you see when I stamp it, you'll notice that it has two lines for the circle. There's an inter inside line and an outside line. I made this project a few times after I did this video and I found that if I tried not to ink the middle part of that, the middle circle, that it actually worked better because I didn't have to work so hard when, I'm, when I go through my watercolor to try to get rid of that inner line. Um, so you see there's two lines there. If you can try to just get that outside line, it will make it a lot easier on you. Trust me, learn from my mistakes. So you'll see when I go to watercolor that how I have to use a little bit more effort to get that line to disappear, but it, 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 it still works. So now I'm taking the base of that watercolor, which also comes with the, frame, with the stamp set, and I'm going to ink it up in the sepia and stamp that on my watercolor paper. So in the, in the Melanie Minchinger set, you can actually use their stamps that go inside the circle to create your own snow globe and you can use the decorative elements and everything, and it, it comes out great, but I really just wanted to focus on the snow globe for this project. I'm using my number eight black velvet brush, and I put a, I put a little bit of water. I didn't drown it, but I also didn't pinch it off because I really wanted to try to blend that second line out, and you can see as we go on, you'll be able to see that line being a little bit stubborn. So I tried to use a lot of water so that I could pull that African violet right into the middle of the globe. So I'm trying to soften that line so that it makes it look like glass. With the purple on the outside, it'll give that glass sheen. And I'm not pulling it a very far into the, into the middle because what's going to happen is I want to be able to put my image in the middle and then I can go back with my palette and add more African violet around the edges once my, once my focal image is in place. So I'm just kind of going around and around and trying to soften that, that stupid second line with the water. And then just pulling a little bit by a little bit into the center. And I found that doing this, it's, watercoloring is my therapy. So I really like to take my time and pull it out nice and slow and it's very relaxing for me. So a project like this is just, I love to watch it come to life and it, it makes, makes me happy. So I'm going to finish up pulling that color out of the lines and I really want, you really want to be careful. You don't want to go outside of the snow globe. You want to try to stay that, keep that line nice and crisp as you're pulling the color out because that's going to give you that snow globe feeling at the end. You don't want that line to wash away. I'm still trying to work out that second line. You can see it's just being very stubborn. So I think I gave up and thought, well, I'll just come back in with some purple layer later and I'll, I'll try to um, fix it there. Now I'm just trying to crisp up those edges if I got a little bit outside of them and just to soften them so they weren't so harsh. A little, I know I just said don't do that, but apparently I'm doing that. So as I told you, this was my first one. I ended up not doing the same stuff on my second and third ones because the more you do, the more you learn. And I think I was just trying to soften it a little bit. All right, so hopefully we're moving on to the base, which the same thing. We're going to put our, we're going to wet our brush. We're going to pinch off the water because I don't want a lot of water. I really wanted to maintain the 
the lines in the bottom of this globe on this small image. So I just tried to pull a little bit out of the sides and I'll come back in later with my palette and I'll, I'll darken some of that stuff up as well. And of course, if you drop water on your project, you can always just take a paper towel and sop it up. I'm trying to get rid of that harsh line that it created. And I'm just pulling a little bit of the color outside to give it a little more dimension. And if you go in with some clean, clear water, I'm trying to get rid of the, just a hint of a harsh line that was coming in that I could see so that I had a nice area to stamp my focal image. And I knew if I didn't do that ahead of time, it would be really hard to get rid of that line once my image was, was down. So now I'm taking my lighthouse and this is the small lighthouse that comes with um, a bunch of other images. And I'm using my stamp positioner. This is the Stampin' Up stamp positioner. It's a stamp jig. You can get it from Michael's or anywhere else. I got, happened to get mine a long time ago from Stampin' Up. Um, and Art Impressions actually makes a really cool, I just bought the cool one, the really small one that I can fit. And I've been trying that out to see if I like it more. I'll let you know if I do. So now I'm just inking that up with sepia. And I'm going to place that image right in the corner of the stamp jig so that it puts the image exactly where I want it. I know this is a hard concept. My mother has been learning how to watercolor and using the stamp jig is a little hard for her to grasp. So I might end up doing a future video that just shows you how to use the stamp jig or this, the stamp positioner. Because it is, I use it in almost every project that I use. It's a, it's a great tool, especially if you can't really judge. Some of the stamps are not perfectly positioned, so it's hard to get them to be straight. Or if you wanted to put something next to them, you really will get better results if you use a stamp positioner. In my opinion, anyway. So now I'm taking my brush. I'm still using a number eight. And... I'm just pulling some of that color out of the lines on this little house and this little lighthouse part. And I wanted to, so I wanted my lighthouse to be, to be white. So I'm just pulling a little bit of that color in. Kind of looks like a dirty lighthouse, but it really just kind of accentuates the fact that it's red, it's white. And I'll go in later with some color and put some color onto the roof and to the lighthouse itself. But this part is, it goes really quickly. You just want to pull a little bit of the color out of those lines and soften them up. Okay, so there's our... There's our little lighthouse. Now I'm pulling some of that color out of the lines a little bit to kind of create, I'm actually using it from my palette and I know you can't see the palette. I'm gonna have to try to do that. I wanted to really zoom in here though so that you could see what I was doing. So it kind of got sacrificed in the, in the editing. So I'm using African Violet and I'm just putting a little bit of snow here and there and just to create the kind of a snowy scene inside of this little snow globe. I'm not using a lot of water. I'm actually using very little water and I've kind of diluted my color a little bit too so it's very soft when I put it down. <laughs> See, that second line was bothering me. So I'm putting a little bit of my African violet and I'm trying to get rid of that second line. I think it kept catching my eye while I was trying to trying to color and I knew that I was my focal image is now down so I know I have the room and I can try to hide that that harsh line in there with some water and some African violet 
and it ends up being fine. You can't even see. You can't even see the line after I'm done, or you can. It's very faint. Plus, the more the more you put, the more color you put down around that snow globe when you go back in with your white, either a white gel pen or a um, white acrylic sharpie, a poster paint pen. However, you're going to be using your snow. It'll make the show the snow show up a little bit better if there's if there's color down underneath it. So now I'm just taking my brush and I'm kind of I don't know what you want to call it. I'm kind of moving it around. I didn't want it to be just a line. I wanted it to look snowy and and like there's a lot of color. So I'm just moving my brush around here and there so that it's not just a, a line of color. And I believe I'm just using some clean clear water just to get that just to get that color moving. And bringing it slowly and in, slowly into the middle of the globe. Well, oh, there I am with water again. I'm very messy when I when I paint. <laughs> So now I'm taking a little bit of water on my brush and I'm going above those snow lines that I that I painted and I'm just pulling that color up and out of the lines so that the underneath it stays white 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 and I'm gonna do the same on the other side just to kind of soften those lines a little bit and then I'll pull a little bit out of the bottom of this this line here it's just gonna be the hint of snow and this is a very simple um, scene. It doesn't have a lot of elements. It really only uses two stamps other than the globe itself. You use the lighthouse. And then you're going to use the fir branch, just the top fir branch from the fir tree set, the new fir tree set, to put the little holly leaves on the top. And then I just drew in the berries. So it's really only two art impression stamps and two Gina K stamps to make this little this little scene. So I'm putting a little bit of African violet on top of the little house next to the lighthouse to make it look like it's got snow on it. And I'm take now I'm taking some English red from my palette and I'm coloring in the top of the lighthouse. And I'm also going to use that same color and I'm going to color in the, the house with that same color. So I'm using, going into the, the color in my, on my palette and I'm just going to fill in that, that little lighthouse, the little house on the lighthouse. And I start going, you want to go in, red is very, very, bright and vibrant so you want to go in and start kind of light and then work your way out darker and darker as you go and I think the red especially in a project like this the red just really makes the whole picture pop I think now I'm coming in here with the back of my marker, the fine tip, and I'm really darkening up some of those areas underneath the roof on the side of the house and the little chimney because it's so little. And the little attached, like the back of the house looks like it might have a barn or something, so I'm just darkening that up. I tend to do this on my projects just to darken things up instead of using the brush. Okay, so now we have that down. I'm going to take the back of my sepia marker and I'm going to go around and just darken in those those shadowed areas like where the light comes out of the lighthouse and all the little windows. I'm just going to make those really, really dark. So 
So now we have our little lighthouse. It's starting to come together. And yeah, I just decided to go in and darken that the sides up a little bit more. They were looking a little faded to me. And after after I do this, I will add take the water and I will just soften those lines that I created out a little bit. Just make sure if you're going to go and you're going to paint with a color like red next to something that's white, make sure when you are done with the red that you clean your brush really, really well or that red will, will go right into your white area and you won't be very happy. So just make sure you clean it off very well. Now I'm just going to pull some of that color again out of those lines, soften them up. Pull them into the, the middle of that lighthouse. I'm going to use a little more of the sepia on my palette just to create a few more shadows. Then I'll go in with some brilliant yellow on my, I'm um, just softening those lines. I didn't want a harsh line right there. Now make sure you leave a highlight in the middle of that because you don't want it to go flat on you. So you're going to need that highlight in the middle. So now I'm coming in with, I believe I'm going to come in with a yellow, which is a brilliant yellow. And those areas, they're just so small. I decided just to use the back of my pen and just fill in those little, those little windows with some light. And that was brilliant yellow. From Marvy. Okay, now I'm taking some of the sepia from my palette, putting some more on because I ran out, <laughs> and I'm just going to darken in some of those areas underneath the globe and on the sides so that it really makes the globe pop out a little bit. But you again want to leave that highlight in the middle, so be careful you're not just coloring that in solid. And that will really make your the base look just as good as the globe itself. Now I'm coming in with my gel pen and I'm going to make some snow. So all I'm doing is dotting snow all around the globe and on the house and on the lighthouse itself. Just making little snow dots. There's so many ways to create snow. You can use a gel pen, you can use a poster Sharpie poster paint pen. You can mask off with the Molotow uh, masking fluid. You can mask that off before you even start the project. If you're going to use the mol Molotow, you're probably going to want to do that prior to putting down your image and before you pull the color out of the line. So you would stamp your globe and then put down your Molotow so that you're not going over all of those lines. Now I'm just, so I'm just adding lots of snow. It's a snow globe. So lots and lots of snow. The more you color you have pulled from the corner, the sides into the middle, the more that snow is going to show up. So now I'm just adding a few more flakes here and there. And we're done. So now what I've done is put some English red on my palette. And I'm going to create just a little place for my snow globe to sit so it doesn't look like it's just hanging out into midair. So I was thinking this could be some kind of a table, a little red table that it was sitting on that was giving off a little bit of shadows. So I just kind of dragged some English red here and there and just to give the, the globe something to sit on. This was a very, I like this color, so I thought it was a nice color that brought out some of the color in the globe itself. 
in that little house. I love the English red. It's one of my favorite colors. It's just trying to figure out where I wanted that color to go and then trying to soften some of those harsh lines. Now I'm just gonna add some clear, clear, clean, clear water to some of this just to soften some of those lines because I didn't really care for how, how harsh those lines were on the sides. So I was trying to smooth them out a little bit just so they weren't so jagged, I guess. So now I'm taking the large fir branch from the fir tree set and I inked it up with some pine green. And I'm just gonna stamp it a few times on the top of this snow globe. I think I did it three times. And then I'm gonna re-ink it up and I'm gonna do the same on the opposite side. So it looks kinda like those swags that you have. Just gives it a nice little decoration if you wanted to make this a holiday card. So I stamped the, the branches. Now I'm just gonna come in with my paintbrush and some water and I'm just gonna soften those up. And as you see, I, I'm pulling the color a little bit into the center where the berries are gonna be just to make them look like they're attached and there's green all the way across. And I really want to, I don't want to use a lot of water because I want to maintain those leaves. So now I'm using my fine tip of my English red marker and I'm just creating some little berries in the middle of those two branches just to give a little more red, give a little more color to the project. And that's it. So thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you venture out and try this project. And if you want to see some more videos, I'll link them below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you all had a wonderful new year and I hope you join me back here again for another video.